Okie dokie. Here we are. Onks friends, it's uh, 12 noon on May 1st, 2020. And it's been a long time since we tuned in to uh, check in with you guys. So uh, just thought we would do that today. Doesn't look like anybody's on with us. Here we go. We got a few people. All right. Just checking to see who's with us. Um, if it'll let me. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, give me some thumbs up or something if you guys are doing great. It gives me a list of viewers, but then it doesn't put uh, anybody on here, so that's weird. Anyway, uh, glad for those of you that are tuned in. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, my name's Jason Onks here at Onks Woodwind Specialist. Of course, you probably know that already. Um, it's been a while since I did a Facebook Live, and so we have time today. Thought we would do that and just chat and answer a few questions here in a little bit. But just in general, uh, catching you up uh, here at Onks. Um, a lot of people have been effective, affected negatively with the uh, coronavirus um, that's going around. And um, we've been very blessed to be able to actually continue working. Uh, we work, there's just a couple of us here and there's plenty of space for us to work and not really be on top of each other. And, and the six foot rule, I guess you could say here at work. Um, uh, we don't have lots and lots of customers, uh, the public coming in and out. And so um, because of that, uh, we're able to continue working even after uh, the state of Tennessee had a uh, sort of a, a modified version of stay at home uh, uh, several weeks ago. Uh, we were able to continue working uh, under the guidelines that the uh, governor of Tennessee put forth in his executive order. So we've been very blessed to continue working. However, um, our volume of work is definitely down and we we're, we understand why. Um, uh, a lot of musicians that we serve across the, the country uh, are just simply not working. Um, professional orchestras shut down, uh, all venues are shut down, uh, freelance gigs, everything's canceled and shut down and so we understand a lot of our clientele that we serve um, year to year here in our business for professional oboe repair are simply not working and uh, so they want to preserve their financial integrity and uh, you know wait wait until we get off we get through this uh, before they spend money and so because of that a, a lot of uh, people are not sending in for repairs and and so our our volume is down, although we've been blessed to to have some volume. And so uh, Nick and I have been able to work, uh, but unfortunately there there hasn't been enough volume uh, for all three of us. Um, Sam Ferriccio is also one of my team members, and um, just the uh, the volume is not there. Um, so um, so it's unfortunate. However, we're we're getting through it and. Um, we're grateful for those of you that have been able to send uh, work in, and we've been, been honored to, to serve you, um, as always. And so we just want to thank you for that and uh, kind of let you know the, our state of, um, of the shop here. Um, real quick, uh, let me see if it shows me who you guys are. It's weird. I can click on uh, the number of viewers up there, uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't tell me who you are, so uh, not sure what's going on there. Thanks for the thumbs up. Um, whoever did that, I appreciate it. Um, real quick, before we get into the Q&A, um, it's been a very long time since we did this, so I thought I would just do a quick shop tour. Um, so um, I'm standing, I turn my camera around. So I'm in the, the very back corner of our shop. Um, there's Nick Thompson, our amazing Oboe repair technician. Um, 
getting a, getting an, an oboe overhaul uh, completed today, probably. All right, thank you, EJ Kim. Um, I, I did get your uh, questions, EJ, um, and we'll be getting to those questions here shortly. So right here, I'm in the back of the shop. Uh, we got about a 1,400 square foot shop, um, Nick's bench, and then I sit right in front of Nick. That's my bench. And then over here on the left uh, is where Sam works um, when he's here. Uh, we got some supply cabinets, uh, the most important uh, radio, of course. Got to have tunes. Um, lots of picks uh, from years past and people that have influenced my life up there on that wall. My wall of influence is what that is. Um, and then back over here in this little cubby, uh, we have our, our metal lathe. So we do, uh, we make uh, whatever we need to make. So if we were doing a tenon repair, either a tenon replacement or we doing sleeves, um, do it when we make our tone hole inserts, um, we use the, the metal lathe there uh, for all of that stuff. Anything that we need to turn um, to, to make things. Uh, and then over here we have our um, milling machine. Um, I've had this for maybe three years now. Uh, digital has a digital readout, and so we can basically do tone hole inserts um, to um, a ten thousandths of an inch accuracy. And so it's been very helpful to have that digital readout, um, and then um, just the accuracy of this mill itself is is quite quite good. So, um, and then I recently got this new jig right here with my hand and so this is a indexable um, jig which will hold an instrument and so i can actually uh, rotate the instrument once it's uh, uh, placed in there and so that'll allow me to do different post uh, posting and tone hole uh, stuff which is very cool so that's pretty new we haven't done a lot of experimenting with that but that's that uh, that new jig there then we have a wood lathe over here. We spin all of our tenon corks so that they're nice and even and consistent. So when we replace a tenon cork on your oboe, uh, we spin it in this uh, wood lathe. And you can see all the uh, cork dust there from um, previous uh, tenons. Uh, we got a supply cabinet over here. Here's the corn plant. You can't have uh, a shop without some kind of green, green foliage. So we have a corn plant and a couple other uh, plants up here. Interesting things, right? Uh, Beth sits here. Um, so anytime you guys contact us, she's not here right now. I think she's out running an errand for us. Um, but any uh, phone calls and emails, uh, scheduling communications uh, that, um, that you do with us uh, mostly comes through Beth and then she does that here at this desk. And uh, we have the all-important uh, coffee grinder and maker. Uh, we grind our beans every morning, fresh, um, refrigerator. And we have our restroom through that door. Our sink where we do washing our instruments uh, for, uh, for full annual cleanings and overhauls. We can do all our washing there. Uh, this is our ultrasonic cleaner. So when we're doing overhauls, we can really clean um, keys really well uh, before and after we buff them. Uh, we also clean uh, octave vents in there when we're doing annual cleanings. Uh, that way the octave vents get really spick and span clean and any uh, microscopic debris that might be in those tiny uh, octave vent holes uh, get cleaned in that and it's super efficient. Um, back up a little bit. And that is the Beth shipping area. So all the instruments come in and out of here, um, come through this department, and Beth packages those up uh, with love, of course, uh, before they go back to you guys. And then back in here, the light's off, but this is our buffing room. So this is kind of the dirty room. So when we have to buff keys for overhauls uh, or touch up a key from some kind of repair, uh, there's a, a buffing machine there. So, hi, Julie. Thanks for uh, joining us. Okay, I'll get to your question here in a moment. We'll see what that's about. 
But, um, yep, so this is our buffing room. It's real dirty, uh, but this is uh, when we do overhauls and we shine keys up. This is where that happens uh, with that buffing machine and vacuum system uh, right there. So that's a quick shop tour. And, of course, uh, that's the door when you come visit us in and out of that door. All right, I'm flipping it back around. I know y'all didn't don't want to see my ugly face, but but here we are. And so, um, <clears throat> just going to do some uh, some Q and A and some thoughts on what uh, the questions that y'all have. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Julie, I'll start with you since it's up there, and then we'll get to EJ. Um, he sent us some questions ahead of time. Uh, I have. A a Yamaha E41 Custom that you have worked on before. Can you tell me why there may be a reason for a couple of screws that come loose on a regular basis? Most common is the one right near the first octave key, not an adjustment screw. Uh, yeah, so if you're not talking about the adjustment screws, Julie, um, so all the keys on the, on the oboe are held on uh, two ways. Uh, they're either held on by a long cylindrical rod um, and, or they're held on by a uh, pivot screw. So just on two points. Um, and so I think you're talking about the, the screws or the cylindrical rod that holds the keys on. And so what happens, uh, and it can happen with new oboes too. Um, but it definitely happens as, as instruments are used and they get older but as, as they get used, those, sometimes those threads on the rods, they just start wearing out uh, from being unscrewed and screwed back in uh, with maintenance over the years. Uh, with uh, keys moving on the rods a lot, sometimes they'll, they'll move. And then over time, those those, uh, the rods and the threads are um, just become loose. And so uh, when you have a key that you're pressing uh, consistently up and down over time that that key is basically rotating that rod that holds it in place and so that that rod will back out uh, just from the nature of the keys moving um, and that's doing that because the the threads on the rod and the threads in the post have become loose over time sometimes they're loose to begin with um, but in general it happens just over time with uh, normal uh, playing of the instrument and so there's things that we can do in the shop uh, to help tighten those up um, uh, next time you're in Julie uh, we're uh, we're happy to um, um, address that bring it to our attention a lot of times it's hard for us to know if something's loose like that if it's not uh, actually backed out when we receive it um, and if somebody doesn't mention that uh, sometimes it's hard for us to know if it's if it's doing that or not. Uh, recently, we, we did have a customer that was concerned with a rod that kept backing out all the time, and this one was related to the low B and B flat mechanism. Um, and it was so loose that in that case, we actually replaced the rod and we made the threads larger so that the rod was really nice and snug uh, inside the post. And so that for that situation, we replaced the rod and um, that eliminated that issue. So, okay, my friends, um, thank you, Julie uh, Duell. Thank you for that question. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully that answered the question. Uh, if not, um, you're always welcome to call the shop uh, or send me an email and we can, uh, we can go over that more there. Um, my friends, uh, Philip and Julie Smith just tuned in from uh, Lexington, Kentucky unless they're traveling or something, but that's where they normally are. So uh, thanks for saying hi, you guys. I uh, miss you guys. Uh, hopefully we'll get to get back together someday. Um, so uh, EJ Kim, um, who is tuning in, I hope, I think he is. Thumbs up, all right. So um, EJ sent me some questions ahead of time and uh, so I'm going to read these and then try to answer them to my best ability. So I'm, I'm looking at my computer screen. So uh, number one, well, first off, uh, EJ mentioned, you know, I've, I've met um, 
uh, I think I've met you, EJ. We've definitely uh, talked. And so uh, I suggested that when they lay down their oboes, if you're ever laying your oboe down on a tabletop, to, um, to not lay the oboe on the left side where it would lean on the low B lever. And so uh, that is uh, something that EJ uh, remembered from our uh, previous uh, conversations, and that's definitely uh, something for you guys to know that if you, when you lay your oboe down, you need to lay it on the right side so that it doesn't put stress on the low B and B flat levers. So that'll help you. Um, you know, our low B and B flats sometimes are hard to get out anyway. And so if you, if you lay your oboe down on that lever, it could, it could bend it or stretch it. And then that'll make that uh, low B flat go out of adjustment and uh, make it even more difficult to play. So um, thanks for mentioning that EJ. So now we're gonna go to your first question. Question one, do you think non-pull through swabs have a higher chance of the metal weighted piece or the metal weighted end scratching the inside of the oboe on its way back out? Or is it not something to be too concerned about as long as you are careful? Yeah, so um, good question. I uh, appreciate you sending that. Um, generally, um, on the years that I've been using swabs the, with the metal weighted end, uh, the weight is, weighted end is usually pretty smooth. Um, and so I've never really seen one that is, has like rough edges or anything. So if you buy a new swab that has the weighted end, I would definitely want to, you know, feel that uh, with your hand, uh, make sure there's no rough edges. Um, and if there's no rough edges, I don't really think it's a huge concern. You definitely want to, when you're putting it into the oboe, you want to put it in there nice and slow. And then if you're actually pulling the weighted, if you're pulling the, pull it, pulling it back through, um, instead of, if you're not pulling the, the swab all the way through your oboe, but you pull the weighted end back into the oboe, you want to do that very slowly so that a, so that the weight doesn't bang around and, and damage the reed well. Um, but then it could also, you know, as it's, potentially damaging the reed well, uh, you could all potentially could damage the wood or the plastic of your oboe. Uh, so whatever you do, you wanna make really slow intentional movements uh, with the swab. And you know, if y'all uh, visit our website and search uh, swabbing, uh, just in general, when you're swabbing, you wanna make very slow deliberate movements because if you uh, pull the swab fast, or jerk the swab, uh, you're potentially gonna create a knot uh, there. So in general, uh, whether you're, try you're worried about uh, damaging the oboe uh, with the weighted end of the swab, or you're worried about getting a swab stuck, anytime you're using a swab, you need to um, move slowly, basically, okay? Now, a lot of times if you get a swab, the, the swab will have a plastic coating on that metal um, weight. Um, and so if it has the plastic coating, that's supposed to be there to help protect the oboe, I would assume. Um, and it, it does. And so if, if you want to leave that, uh, plastic coating on there, that'll, that'll help that. However, my experience is when you play your oboe and there's moisture down inside the bore, you stick that, that metal weight with the plastic coating on, the plastic coating sticks to the moisture in the oboe and makes it much more difficult uh, to get the weight through the oboe. So personally, um, I've always taken that plastic coating off of the swab weight um, just because it was hard to, to get through. I was probably just impatient at <laughs> that time in my life. So um, uh, yeah, so if the plastic coating works and you can, can make that work, uh, leave that on. If not, uh, the weight itself should not uh, scratch or damage the bore as long as you're moving really slow. Okay. Um, question number two from EJ. Do humidifiers inside the oboe case give rise to the potential uh, of rusty springs and keys? So that's a hard one to answer. Um, but if, if I just kind of go with some generalities, uh, anytime you introduce moisture to metal, 
uh, there's a potential of, of a chemical reaction, basically, right? So there's uh, moisture can create uh, tarnish and rust uh, corrosion, okay? So, yes, I guess it's potential that that could happen. Uh, however, uh, personally, uh, with my years of experience, and I have always had a humidifier in my oboe case, um, I've never had any of my oboes rust because of um, the humidifier, at least what I could say was because of the humidifier. I would say probably what is gonna be the biggest deciding factor is your overall uh, environment where you live. And so for instance, uh, we're very blessed to have lots of clients uh, in Puerto Rico uh, and Florida. And so when you live in an area like uh, Florida or Puerto Rico and you're, it's uh, a warmer client, very humid client, uh, uh, climate, <laughs> um, uh, warm, humid climates uh, with la large bodies of water surrounding you. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be in an area that can, really is going to have a potential to promote rust uh, on your oboe springs. And then if the oboe itself is not man um, uh, maintained for a while and that when that oil starts breaking down, you're going to start having uh, potential of rust and corrosion setting in on the keys and the rods, which then would bind up uh, the oboe keys that, on your oboe. So, uh, yes, there's always the possibility that a humidifier in a case could uh, promote um, rust. However, I think it's probably very unlikely, but if you were to live in a very humid uh, location like Florida or Puerto Rico, let's say, and you had a, a humidifier, uh, that's probably probably a bit much on the humidity level. Um, I think in general for, for clients that live in really super humid, uh, humid areas, um, it's probably not necessary uh, to have a humidifier in your case. Uh, but you know, I grew up in Tennessee, uh, went to school in Arkansas, Illinois, uh, lived in Wisconsin for a year. Um, and all of those locations kind of being in the middle of the country, um, I've always had a humidifier in my case and never really noticed a, a huge negative effect with rust. Okay, I hope that's as clear as mud or as clear as rust. <laughs> okay, uh, question three from EJ. Uh, let's see. It seems cork pads are generally not used for the tone holes in in the bell or on the bell. Is there a reason for that? <clears throat> yeah, EJ, uh, for years and years, I, I actually, well, very quickly, I don't know um, the reasoning. Um, I'll be honest because I'm a repair shop and I'm not a manufacturer. Um, but for, for years... Um, that I remember, uh, a lot of manufacturers would use the uh, the white skin pads, or some manufacturers even today will use a white uh, leather pad um, on the low B and B flat keys on your oboe. Nowadays, um, one such company, uh, Loray, uh, most of you are familiar with the Loray Oboe Company. Um, so for years they use the white skin pads, but nowadays I think they're pretty much using all cork pads on their oboes. Um, so in general, I, I don't know why uh, manufacturers did that um, or why they switched and, and used uh, cork now. Um, not sure their, their reasoning, uh, but I think a lot of times when a manufacturer starts doing some procedure, uh, they'll do that. Uh, forever until they find a, a reason to switch. And so for the very longest time, most manufacturers did use a skin pad down there. Um, uh, but now a lot of them have switched uh, either to a, a, a different type of pad, like a leather pad, or just going straight all cork. Um, so yeah, I don't think that really answered your question. I really didn't have the answer, but um, I have noticed 
you know, manufacturers used to use the, the skin pads, but now a lot of them don't. So, uh, all that to say, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. And then uh, one more from EJ. So if anybody out there is listening and you have a question, uh, why don't y'all go ahead and put that through. We're going to talk, uh, this last question from EJ, do you uh, service acrylic oboes like the uh, Marigo Alto, Alto Noir? If so, have you observed any substantial differences in the maintenance and servicing of such oboes in contrast to wood oboes? Okay, um, very good question. Um, I would say in general, uh, when we're talking about service and maintenance of oboes, I would say that it doesn't matter what the material is. So whether it's a uh, an acrylic oboe uh, like those, um, I have serviced some of those oboes. I've also serviced um, three acrylic oboes uh, by Tom Henniker. Um, he has made uh, five or six maybe, maybe four or five acrylic oboes, and I've seen three of them. Um, and so whether it's acrylic, plastic, or wood, or some variation, um, some synthetic variation, uh, all of those oboes have metal posts, metal keys, metal rods, um, and all of that metal has to be maintained. Um, and so, you know, no matter what the oboe itself is made out of, uh, the, the mechanism, which is all metal basically, uh, has to be maintained, has to be clean, has to be re-oiled, um, you know, that, that way you'll help uh, prevent rust, uh, corrosion, uh, and tarnish buildup uh, on your instrument. Um, now, there could be different ways of, of handling these different materials, and but in general, you should just be super careful with your oboe uh, when you're swabbing. Um, be very very slow about it, uh, very gentle. You know, you always want to kind of wipe your instrument down. You know, if you keeping fingerprints off your instrument, especially if you have um, a high acidity rate um, that coming out of your skin, um, which I just wrote a blog post about that, by the way. If you go to onxws.com and uh, go to the blog page, there's a brand new post on the high acidity levels um, in your skin. And I have recommendations about that, so um, head on over to onxws.com right after you get off with me today and be enlightened with all kinds of great information. Um, so, yeah, um, in general, you want to be very careful uh, with your oboe, no matter what the material is, and have it maintained so that, the, uh, so that you can prevent rust and all that kind of good stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I, again, not really any substantial differences in maintain, maintaining and servicing oboes uh, that have different uh, that have different types of materials. So whether it's uh, plastic um, or acrylic or wood, uh, you just want to be careful with with any oboe. Um, you want to have it serviced. And um, now there's obvious, obvious um, differences in, in the playability and, or not playability, but uh, the timbre of these instruments and the, the tones that you get and the reads that you make. And so that's a whole nother topic. Um, oh, hello, Francis. My friend Francis is on and we were just talking about Puerto Rico and that's where Francis is. So hi, hi to Francis down in Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for EJ's questions. Um, EJ just sent me a little note, so thank you. I'm ho hopefully that was, um, uh, helpful for you. Um, you know, if any of you have questions to follow up after this live event ends, um, uh, please, you can send me an email. You can send it to jason at onxws.com if you have any other questions and, um, you know, any questions that you guys have, um, could be potential content in the future. Uh, we could do blog posts or another video. So yeah, uh, we, we love questions. So, um, very good. 
I'm glad you're here with us today, Francis. Um, and hope you guys are well down in Puerto Rico and are, are um, surviving the uh, virus and um, have plenty of supplies on the island and all of that stuff. Um, so if anybody has any last second questions, uh, feel free to type those and send them. Oh, hey, Kim. So one of our local Smyrna, Tennessee clients, uh, oboist Kim, is tuning in. So thank you for saying hi. All right, my friend Sean, who is a, another expert repair person in California, just uh, tuned in. Thank you very much. And, um, oh yeah, so while I was answering all those questions, Beth showed up. So we're going to uh, go over here real quick. Let's see if she's hiding. No. Beth got arrived, and so she's here shipping out an oboe uh, to one of our clients. And so uh, that's what she does to, uh, to help our shop keep moving efficiently uh, so that we can um, keep repairing these oboes. And Francis is tuned in, and uh, Francis says hello, Beth. Hi, Francis. And uh, Philip and Julie Smith say hi, Beth. Hello. Good so, to see you guys. That's awesome. Oh, somebody just gave you a heart. Aw. <laughs> heart you back. I don't know. Can we heart them back on a Facebook know. Live? I don't We're know. Old. We don't know that. We're old. I'm just trying to figure out the button to flip the camera back around. So, um, anyway, um, all right, we've been shooting this live video for a long time. Uh, I really appreciate everybody, uh, for, for tuning in. Um, thank you, EJ, for all your questions and Julie Duell for your question. Um, anytime you guys have questions, you're free to email those in to us and, uh, or call us on the phone. Um, we, uh. We're happy to answer any questions, and, and again, like I said, a lot of times I'll take y'all's questions and we'll create blog posts out of those um, and, and videos, and then we'll share those with the rest of the world. Um, so, again, thank y'all for that. Well, um, it's about 12.32, so we've been on here for over 30 minutes. That's a long Facebook Live. I know you guys have lots of other stuff to be doing with your lives. Um, we want to uh, wish you guys safe, um, well, safe uh, quarantining, I guess. Uh, we wish you guys much health uh, as we continue through this period of our lives. Um, and as, as states start reopening, uh, again, today's May 1st, and the state of Tennessee is starting their um, reopening process today. So we're very blessed that Tennessee was not as negatively affected with the virus as many other states um, and countries. And so um, we're starting to, Tennessee is slowly reopening starting today, and uh, we wish uh, all of you guys in your states the best um, as you reopen and become in uh, as you start going out into the public uh, more fre frequently um, so just best wishes to everybody uh, stay healthy and um, you know just a shameless plug for our shop uh, we we definitely have openings um, because of the slowdown and so uh, any of your colleagues and friends anybody that that has an oboe that needs any service uh, we're honored to do that for you and for them uh, just to give us a uh, contact us and we'll set something up and be able to get it done right away um, thank you guys so much for all your wonderful comments and your hearts and your thumbs ups um, i would say pat yourself on the back and uh, treat yourself to a special lunch um, and go have this Friday. So go out and, or I guess not go out, I guess stay in and have a special beverage tonight um, on me. <laughs> so y'all take care. We love you and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.